Hey everyone, welcome to another ranking, and last week I just saw the movie Aloha, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give a ranking of my least favorite to my favorite Cameron Crowe movies, yes, I'm going to rank Cameron Crowe's movies, and yeah, I, I'm a big fan of Cameron Crowe, so I'm excited to do this list, so let's get right into it, here's my least, my ranking of Cameron Crowe's movies, my least favorite to my favorite, so yeah, starting it off with my least favorite, my number 8, Aloha. Yes, the new movie Aloha. I, as you saw my review of last week, I did not like this movie very much. I didn't find it very funny. I didn't find it very compelling. I didn't like the drama. I didn't like the writing or the, these characters. I know Richard McAdams, Emma Stone, Bradley Cooper, Al Baldwin, uh, Jay Baruchel, Danny McBride, John Krasinski, all great actors that are all in this movie. None of them were really good. Well, John Krasinski and Richard Williams, they were okay, but everyone else wasn't very good. I didn't like the chemistry between Bradley Cooper and Emma Stone. Emma Stone was very annoying. I couldn't stand her very over the top. Yes, sir. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. She's like a hyper weirdo, and it, I, I didn't like it. And Bradley Cooper, he wasn't very interesting, and it tried to it tie it in deep about the Hawaiian culture, and I'm like, it didn't do a good job. Just go watch The Descendants or watch any of these other Cameron Crowe movies, because this is the worst Cameron Crowe movie. I didn't like Aloha. Aloha. Coming to number seven, it's Vanilla Sky. Yes, this is one of Tom Cruise's worst movies. This and Lines for Lambs. I don't know what the worst one is. I don't know. They're, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. But yeah, yeah. Vanilla Sky, I don't like this movie. Cameron Diaz, Penelope Cruz, they try, but they're bad. Tom Cruz, he tries, but he's bad. And yeah, this is just a weird, dumb, sick, twisted, weird movie. And yeah, this movie tried, Cameron Crowe, I guess what he's trying to go for this movie, I think he was trying to be like Darren Aronofsky or something. I watch this movie, it feels like I'm watching like a Darren Aronofsky movie, but it's not Darren Aronofsky, it's Cameron Crowe trying to be Darren Aronofsky, and it just doesn't work. It tries to be very psychological, and tries to make it tries to make the movie very visual, but it just doesn't work. The visuals aren't really good. The psychological part of it is just comes off as weird and awkward, other than intimidating and disturbing. Yeah, and the performances aren't particularly good. The story isn't very captivating or interesting, and I just didn't like this movie. This movie just came off as weird and awkward, and that's what it is. It's not a good movie. It's just a very weird movie, and I'm not a fan of it. Coming number six is Elizabeth Town. Yes, Elizabeth Town. This movie stars Lando Bloom, Judy Greer, Kirsten Dunst, Alec Baldwin, Susan Sarandon, all those guys, and they're all fine, I guess. Uh, okay, you're probably wondering why do I have the DVD of this movie? I actually don't hate this movie all that much. It's not a good movie, but it's not a bad movie, and I can actually relate a lot to this movie. This main guy, Orlando Bloom, plays him. Yeah, I can relate a lot to him. He goes through some stuff in this movie. I don't want to spoil this movie, but he goes through a lot of stuff that I've personally been through, and it's very heartbreaking and very interesting to watch. And I actually enjoyed these two, Kirsten Dunst and Orlando Bloom, in this movie together. Their chemistry was actually decent. There's some script problems. The writing is pretty sloppy. The direction is pretty sloppy. The execution is very sloppy. This movie in general is a very sloppy film. And it comes off as a little half-assed, but it works because the two lead characters are interesting. Some of the comedy is pretty good. And I just relay a lot to the movie. It's I don't think of it as a great movie or even a good movie, but it's a movie I enjoy, and it's like a guilty pleasure of mine. It's a guilty pleasure Cameron Crowe movie, and I like Elizabeth Town. It's weird, but I like it. Coming number five is the movie Singles. Yes, this was Cameron Crowe's, uh, one of his first movies. Or was this his first movie? I don't know. He wrote uh, Fast Times for Rich and High, but that uh, doesn't count. It's not on this list. This is just his directing movies. And this movie is good. It's really good. I like these actors. I like these characters. I love the showing the different stories of each of these weird, bizarre characters. And I like it. I like Matt Dillon in this movie. And I love the small world Tim Burton's in. And... It's fun. It's a fine movie. It comes off as a little average because it kind of is average. I don't find anything like, brilliant about this movie. But it is good. It's got good humor, good characters, good writing. And it's just a fun, enjoyable Cameron Crowe movie. It's more of like a one-time watch kind of movie. But it's still good. Coming number four is We Bought a Zoo. Yes, I got the Blu-ray of We Bought a Zoo. I really, really like this movie. I, I was actually very shocked because I was going into this movie expecting to hate it. I saw the trailers when it first came out. It looked really stupid. But I saw it. I quite enjoyed myself. I kind of liked it. Matt Damon was good. Skull Johansson was good. Uh, Dakota Fanning was good. Uh, a few of them were good. Even they, got, they even got, what's his name, Patrick Fugit from Almost Famous. He was even fine in this movie. And I, I just like this movie. I like some of the comedy. And I love the family drama of this movie. It's about a guy who basically lost his wife. And basically, 
he wants to move out of his neighborhood, so basically he buys a house, but that house is also run by a zoo. And if he buys the house, he has to basically run the whole zoo. And basically, uh, yeah, his entire family, they buy a zoo. That's the title, We Bought a Zoo. And it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie, it's very thrilling. Especially if you like love animals and stuff, and if you love good family drama movies, it's just a fun movie. Some decent comedy, some good drama, Matt Damon's Colin Jansen are really good in this movie, and it's just a good, light-hearted family movie, and I just love putting this on every now and then, because it's, sometimes you just need a good, heartwarming movie, and that's what We Bought a Zoo is. It's a good, heartwarming film, and I like it. It's a good movie. Show number three is Say Anything. Okay, I have been talking to death about this movie. I've mentioned it in my chick flicks list. I just mentioned it in the list I just made of my favorite teen movies. So I'll make this quick. It's a great movie. Cameron Crowe wrote and directed the film very, very well. It's a great 80s movie. Uh, the two lead characters are really good. That, in its simplicity, was what makes this movie so brilliant. It's very romantic. It's very dramatic. It's got great comedy, great characters. I love John Cusack in this movie. And yeah, the boombox scene, awesome scene. Next. Coming number two is Jerry Maguire. Yes. Show me the money. Okay, I got Jerry Maguire. Got Jerry Maguire. A great movie. A few good men's good too, but this is Cameron Crow. Cameron Crow. Stan Cameron Crow. Okay, yeah, Jerry Maguire is a great film. I really, really like Jerry Maguire. I love the idea. I love a story about just a sports agent. It's not about the athletes, it's about the sports agent. And Played by Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise gives a performance, one of his best performances. He's fantastic in this movie. Cuba Good Jr. and Renee Selwyn are both good. Cuba Good Jr. won the Oscar. He he actually deserved it. He was great as Rod Tidwell, and I just love Jerry Maguire. I love the character of Jerry Maguire. He's a very complex character, and yeah, he does have unlikable traits, but he's a straight up likable guy, and he's a very interesting character. He's a very well written character, and he has a lot of depth to him, and I really like him. I love a lot of these characters, and the writing in this movie in general is just good between its dialogue and its good comedy, and it's just a very interesting, fascinating movie, and I love Jerry Maguire. The romance is a little distracting, but it works. I like that Renee Zellweger, Tom Cruise, this movie, and yeah, I bought everything in this movie. It's a good movie. It's a very, very good movie. Good acting, good writing, good directing, and yeah, you complete me. And my number one favorite Cameron Crow movie is Almost Famous. I freaking love this movie. I love Almost Famous. This is one of my all-time favorite movies of all time. This is like one of my favorite movies. I love this movie. The writing is amazing. The directing is amazing. The acting, top freaking notch. This movie made Kate Hudson good. That's how good this movie is. Basically, the story of this movie is about a young kid. He wants to be a writer, so basically, he wants to get a job at the Rolling Stone magazine. But, so they give him an assignment. He has to go on tour with a band called Stillwater. Basically, he has to go on tour with them, learn about them, learn what they're like, learn about what music really means to them. And yeah, that's basically the movie. The movie's basically a road trip movie. Him on the road with his band on tour, going to concerts, hotels, experiencing drugs, alcohol, sex, and... Oh my god, it's so good. This movie is amazing. I love this movie. It's so freaking good. The music is awesome. The Stillwater music, they're a fictional band, but the music's great. Like, I can listen to that song. What's that song? Fever Dog? Love that song. Jason Lee's great in this movie. Billy Crobb is great in this movie. Kate Hudson and Francis McDermott, who both got nominated for this movie, they're great. Uh, Patrick Fugit, the main kid, he's great. Zoe so Deschanel's great. A lot of good cameos, like uh, Kyle Gass, Jimmy Fallon, they're all great. And the, the show stealer in this movie is Philip Seymour Hoffman as the music critic. I love him. That is actually one of my all-time favorite Philip Seymour Hoffman performances. I love him in this movie. One of my favorite movie characters. He's fantastic. He steals this movie. And this movie is just great. It's got good drama, great music. The comedic scenes are actually very, very funny. And I love this movie. One of the greatest movies I've ever watched. It's It's got to be in like my top ten favorite movies of all time. Maybe not top five, but top ten, for sure. Love, almost favorites. It's so freaking good. I am a golden god! So that was my ranking of Cameron Crowe's movies. My least favorite to my favorite. So please, comment below. Give me your ranking of Cameron Crowe's movies. Least favorite to your favorite. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. And join the dark side.